I think. <laughs> All right. So um, I realized this, we're going to talk about the inflection of the verb aime to go, but I realized after we finished talking about the syntax of comparatives and superlatives that I forgot something, forgotten something, which is the use of the adverbial accusative um, with comparatives and superlatives. So we talked about how you can say Socrates is wiser, and you can also say he's a little or much wiser. And you can do that with an adjective like much in the dative case, by, by, by much, if you want. Um, but you can also do it with the accusative singular neuter is a standard form. Bolu is the that's nominative or accusative singular neuter. Um, functions in the same way. So you can say Socrates is much wiser, or you can say Socrates is much the wisest mm -hmm. uh, using either Palo or Palu. So this is a syntax that you can use with comparatives or superlatives. The syntax is called adverbial accusative. Important thing. I forgot it. All right, so moving along, we want to talk about uh, a verb, the verb aime. Not a me, but a me. Um, notice that the nominative, I mean, the first person singular of the present active indicative, a me, has a circumflex over the ei. That's because it's a regular toned word. Um, it means go, okay, uh, and it's the same as Latin eo ire, you know, Latin. Um, it's different from, it looks like the verb to be, but what's the difference between a me with the circumflex over the ei and the first person singular of the verb to be? That's a me. And the underlying uh, root of the verb a me to be is es. Sometimes it's um, os and sometimes it's is. But the, f right, the, the basic form is es. Um, the basic root of the verb a me to go is the iota, okay, mm -hmm. that connotes movement, okay? So it's pretty, if you, if you learn these forms reasonably well, you won't confront, confuse any one of them. They're very different, well, not very different, but they're different from the forms of the verb to be. So a, let's look at the present indicative in the first column that Polisi's written up so beautifully. A me, uh, I, I, I go, a, second person singular, you see the epsilon, yep. Then ace, that looks like the third person plural of the verb to be, but note the accent. It has a circumflex accent on the first syllable. And in the plural, you see the alternation which governs this inflection, an alternation between a root that's ei um, and a root that's just plain i. So in the plural, um, you, you have no, you have only the iota ending. So im and ita. It asa, we go, you go, they go. All right. Um, if now we switch to the second column and look at the imperfect, it looks like an ungodly mess. The first form is a ah. How do you get that out of a me? Well, the way you do is that it, the root is e i. When you augment it, okay, you get eta iota subscript. When you augment e i, right, and then. Um, if you're going to have the ending be third person, first person singular, you have two choices, okay? And the, the one of them results in uh, alpha, that's the older one. It, it was originally a on, okay? But the on turned into an alpha because it became a syllabic n. Um, in the case of a and something else is going on, but let's not worry about it. So there's the, the first person singular. Um, of the present and active indicative of the verb to go. Then we get the second person singular, which is a, yes, there's an eta there, and e, i, s, theta, alpha, and that's translated as the, you, are you going? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and lastly, in the third person singular, you've got the augmented Epsilon iota gives you the eta with an iota subscript, and then just the ending, eh. It's okay, well, you see, we'll get there. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and then the plural is much more straightforward. Amen, eta, e, san. That's the third person plural ending you expect. You've got the thematized one with the epsilon, a, s, on, like a, a, s, and so forth. All right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. 
Um, the, the, in the next column, Belisi has written the first person singular of the subjunctive and the first person singular of the optative and the infinitive. And you can see that the, that the stem in all of these forms is just iota. So I, it goes it o it es it a it o men it o te it a te it o se rather, and the opt is going to be o i me o o is o i o i men o i te o o i n, or o i n the iota eta optative you could have as well, but so the root iota is the one that's really the essential has the essential minimal amount of this root verb root verb to go, um, but. Uh, that's the way it, it works. Okay. This is the infinitive in the bottom corner. Yep, that's your infinitive, the, the nigh infinitive. Yeah. You've got i as the root. The e is making it thematic, okay? Which is what's happening to thematic verbs here and there. All right? Okay. All right, great.